So at, at the depression level, that's where most of the people need support because they have already ac uh, accepted the loss of the person. And uh, by then they might need a counseling also so that they can be able to move on to acceptance, to accept the fact that they have already lost the person. And that's the last stage of griefing. After you're depressed, you've gone, you've, the reality has sunk into you and then you agree that now I've lost the person, I need to move on with my life, I need to start a new life for myself so that I can be able to also move on with life. So there are some activities that uh, you experience when you, you are stressed. So most of the people tend to cry when they lose somebody. There's also a feeling of yearning. You miss the person. The yearning comes from the memories you've already created with the person. Like you might, you, you might miss hanging out with the person, having the same stories you used to have, uh, making fun. So you yearn for the person. There's also ex when you experience some kind of sadness and denial or anger. And also some other people keep on dwelling on the circumstance of death. Because uh, this happened mostly when the death was not natural. Like maybe somebody was murdered or maybe it was an accident. So you keep on dwelling on the same, uh, on the same incidents. There's another uh, thing, uh, avoid, avoiding restoration of activities. So some people, uh, along all the symptoms that you might experience, there are people who tend to take longer when you're, when you're grieving. And see, that's, these are some of the symptoms you might uh, find when you have prolonged uh, period of griefing. There's an intense sadness and emotional pain. You feel a lot of sadness and emotional pain that you cannot be able to overcome. This happens mostly when you've lost somebody very, very close to you. It might be your mother, it might be your child, it might be your, uh, your spouse. So that sadness doesn't disappear. And something very tiny can trigger you back to your sadness or the emotional pain. There's also a feeling of emptiness and hopelessness. So because you've lost the person, maybe it was your spouse, you're used to them, you're fond of them, you might feel empty, you might feel uh, hopelessness because you've already lost the person. There's a lot you used to do together. Uh, there's also a feeling of yearning to reunite with the deceased. You, you, some of the people miss the people, they even, uh, you find people even dreaming with them. So you miss having the same memories, had, having fun maybe. Uh, the other thing you might have preoccupation with the deceased or with circumstances of death. So maybe the, the, the circumstance of death was very traumatic. So you get preoccupied with what happened that day. Maybe you're actively involved. Maybe you took the person to the hospital you drove them to the hospital before they passed away. So you might be, uh, be preoccupied and trying to replay the same thing over and over again in your mind. Uh, there's also difficulty in engaging in happy memories of the lost person. So there might you find maybe there are things you used to do with the person who passed away. Maybe you used to go uh, maybe riding or hiking or maybe over a weekend you used to go have lunch. So sometimes you might not be able to engage in the same in the same memories, make creating the same happy memories because you you feeling guilty because you've already lost the person, but that disappears within a short time. So maybe you used to go swimming on Saturdays. You maybe used to go dancing on Sundays. So you might experience that those are not your happy memories anymore because you. When you try to redo them, it reminds you of the same person. So there's also avoidance of reminders of the deceased. So you might find you avoid the activities that you used to do with the deceased so that you can avoid the, to, uh, you can avoid the memories. And there's also a reduced sense of identity. There's detachment and isolation from surviving friends and family. So, for the people who are around you, sometimes everybody experiences grief in their own way. And as a person, you might feel like most of the people around you don't feel the same thing you're feeling or they don't 
take it intensively as you're taking it. So you tend to isolate yourself uh, with them because you feel like they don't experience the same thing you're feeling. There's also a lack of desire to pursue personal interests or plans. Sometimes a person so close to you dies and you feel like life is not important anymore. You don't feel like working anymore. Uh, if you if maybe you are careful about your diet because of another person, you feel like it's, it doesn't make sense anymore. So those are some of the things that, that you experience when you have prolonged uh, period of grief. So the other thing we're going to tackle is um, Defranchised grief. Uh, this is when a person mourning is restricted in some way. Maybe do the mourning process of refuse to acknowledge the they are lost. So grief may be defranchised for several reasons. The first one is society devalues the loss. So the loss of maybe because bereavement you can you can be you can grieve because of maybe losing a losing a pet losing a person. So my, my, maybe you might lose your pet and you're grieving, but somebody else doesn't. Like the society, the society values don't value pets to a level that they believe you can mourn just because you lost your pet. So there's also the loss. Uh, the loss is ambiguous. Maybe it was a. I'll give an example. If the child was a, you, maybe you lost the child and the child was adopted. So my, somebody else might perceive like maybe. That 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 is that that there was no a lot of attachment between you and the child just because you didn't give birth to the child, or maybe you lost a very old parent, like maybe that your parent was a hundred years or a hundred and something. People like people. There are some people who tend to dismiss that like the the parent was already old, so I feel like it was a favor. So. Uh, those are some of the things. There's also society stigmas of the uh, circumstances of death. So you find there are some taboos, like when a woman dies when undergoing, I'm just giving an example. When a woman dies when undergoing a miscarriage or an abortion, some of the people might stigmatize that death because uh, abortion is a crime and everybody perceives it as a sin. So they might not take it as intensively as they would have taken it if it was another uh, natural cause of death. Uh, there's also society doesn't recognize the person's relationship to the deceased. Maybe you might lose a coworker at work and when you're telling your family or your friends, they're like, no, um, they, they, they take it lightly just because it was a coworker. They don't know the, intensi the intensity of how much you are involved with the person or how much you valued the person in your life. Um, there's another one. Um, others do not consider the person capable of the grief. So especially when it comes to young children, we tend to, we tend to take it lightly. You might think maybe because they are young, they are not able to, uh, they, they are not able to understand the whole the whole death process and they don't maybe understand the bereavement that you're experiencing and you might dismiss the child just because they are young or you think they are not there yet to understand uh, the process of dying. So mostly when it comes to support uh, in, in bereavement, uh, you have, uh, there's something I always say, it's not easy because at some point everybody has gone through it. Uh, if uh, somebody you have lost somebody in your life, or if you have not lost, someday you will lose somebody. So it's not easy, but support is very, very important. Learn to get support from people who you know they might they will help you. And always, when somebody comes to you uh, for help, don't try to compare their problems. Like you, you, I might come to you and tell you, 
I lost my coworker and you, you, you start comparing my problems with somebody else. Like you tell me, ah, hey, yours is not even so bad. Somebody lost their mother. Don't do that. You don't know the level of involvement I have with the person. You don't know what I'm going through. So don't compare. When somebody comes to you for support, don't start comparing their problems or their grief uh, intensity with somebody else. Just be supportive, listen to them. If you feel like it's not, it's not always that when you when you experience grief, you have to undergo counseling. Some of us have um, better ways to cope, and we move on with life. But as a friend, or as a, if you have a family member, it's good to look at uh, mostly the red flags in case somebody needs counseling. If they are, they have prolonged. Uh, prolonged grief, maybe they're experiencing a lot of hopelessness, they are, they're feeling empty, they have even stopped going to work, they have stopped any fun activities, they're just isolating, uh, they, they don't want to involve themselves with anybody. So that's when you know the person is undergoing depression. And so it's not bad to help somebody uh, overcome grief. So it, it doesn't mean 100% of us have to go uh, undergo counseling. But it's good to look out for the signs when somebody needs help to overcome the grieving process. Always give a listening ear, listen to them. Don't, when they come to you and they want to speak, uh, please let them speak, let them speak their mind because a problem shared is halfway solved. So listen to them, guide them, and we, we, they, you help them get over it. So I think uh, that's it for my end. I can hand over to Dr. Margaret to take uh, the uh, to take over. Just before Dr. Margaret comes in, um, there is a poll that is ongoing. Uh, you can uh, you need to respond to that as uh, Dr. Margaret Macanego is um, uh, setting up. Uh, Dr. Margaret Macanego is one of the practitioners in uh, Sasa Doctor and. Um, uh, she will be uh, going through to uh, uh, explain a few things uh, on the on, on this topic. Uh, she's a very senior uh, practitioner in terms of uh, mental health. Uh, she has um, uh, a lot of experience uh, on uh, mental health, and uh, she's going to uh, talk to us. Uh, she practices at Oasis Mental Specialty Hospital, and uh, that's one of uh, the um, uh, partners for Sasa Doctor. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Margaret, you can uh, start as uh, the poll is finalizing. You can share your screen. Yes, hello. Hello, you yeah. can continue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, I, I like it uh, this way. Wanjiro managed to cover most of the, uh, yeah, she, she managed to, to cover most of the points that I, I was raising, but I want to just touch on a few things. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, we are able to see your screen clearly. Okay, now I just need to scroll. I'm so sorry that, uh, the laptop I was using initially. Where is Eric? Let's see. Now what do I do? Yeah. It's okay. You can press it. Uh, laptop here. Yeah. There, there's oh, okay. Ooh, sorry. This technology. <laughs> yeah. So um, she has covered most of the, the key issues um, and defined what loss and grief is. From a psychiatrist's perspective, I would just like to just mention a few examples uh, on the various uh, fa common factors that can bring loss. You know, like sickness. We were uh, I've worked in Kenyatta for many years, and we saw people who come with illnesses like HIV. Even we have encountered cases who had COVID eh, or thought they had COVID start experiencing these grief reactions. But basically, is um, they, 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 they were having a condition that made them think that it's, they're going to die, a life-threatening condition. So life-threatening conditions, 
uh, some are likely to trigger loss and grief reactions. That's why nowadays we have policies that you, before you even test somebody for HIV or cancer or even COVID, you better tell them and get a consent and prepare them, you know, prepare them for that result. It reduces uh, the impact, yeah, so that they're less likely to, to go through such a reaction. Um, and, and again, we are seeing retirement. As you see, the government have a program. Most uh, parastatal institutions, people who are going to retire, they have to go through preparation. You know, um, in Kenyatta, where I used to work, we would go for a preparation three years before, three years to your retirement. Then two years, you go for seminars to prepare you so that by the time you retire with your pension, you... You, you don't make mistakes, you know, get confused, get overexcited, make big mistakes or others to find get depressed because they still have small children and, and they're not able to cope. So um, these are just points that people to, need to know that um, um, loss and grief can happen in diverse situations and especially like marriage and separation. Separation and, 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 and um, divorce are some of common uh, areas where we are seeing people uh, get suffer from loss and grief, also demotions and, and loss of job. And life-changing situations, for me personally, I want to give example of a, a midlife crisis. I think some of you have heard of mid midlife cri crisis, um, where you find a guy, he, he's, he's, he's enjoyed his life, he's working, his children are big and all that, but somewhere when he reaches 40, 45, 50, something happens. And, and or even a, a lady, let me not just blame men. Eh? Somebody starts wearing tight jeans like he's a teenager and starts you know, behaving like a teenager. And, and some women also go through this. And they start now getting into crisis. They want to now start dating young teenagers and young people. And uh, it means that they have not come to terms that they are losing their youth and becoming elderly. Uh, so here people need help to know that you can become a elderly, you can age with grace, yeah? And there are so many more things to enjoy in life other than that. So I'm just pointing out a few to add on to what Majiru's very good uh, presentation. And she went through the symptoms very well. I know of uh, patients who, uh, individuals who lost a relative, you might find this is the oldest son in the home, he loses his father. And the guy, one month, three months down the line, is so calm, he's never shed a tear, nothing eh, at all. So people wonder, Kwani, didn't this person love the father? You know, after a year or so, after some time, now the grief starts, he develops major depression. So, so some people, uh, go through this, maybe they are still in a, a stage of uh, shock, numbness. So they are just like robots. Yes, you're burying, you're arranging the meetings, you bury the father, but you are so numb. You have no emotion. You're not showing your emotions. But at some point, those emotions will come. So we usually like to encourage in a funeral or something, when people are crying and whatever, it is healthy. To, to, to mourn, mourn is healthy. By the way, not just human beings, even animals mourn, if you don't know. And it is a, a natural process to say bye and, and, and to, to, you know, so that you can move on. Now, we have seen patients in denial, and this is a problem. Like with chronic illnesses, come up, for example, cancer and HIV, you're in denial. You know, you don't take medicines, you don't look. You have HIV, you need to take this so your CD4 counts can be high. No, I don't have, I don't have HIV in denial. Some people remain in this stage of denial for a long time. That's why the counselors come in and we find when you do preparation before testing, it reduces the impact of these stages of grief. But just coming and telling someone, you give him a shocker that you have this, they are likely to get into this kind of situation. Uh, I've seen bargaining, many patients, when they are doing bargaining, uh, it's with some even with God and say, look, God, if I go and give away all my money, will my HIV status change? And you find now a patient goes to the bank, clears, gives all the people, it becomes unreasonable, it's now a problem. 
because you can't give all your money away like that. So, so that things can, so if you find, if you find someone like that, it's, it's an, a natural reaction, they need support, yeah? And, uh, but when we counsel, when counseling comes in, then a person is likely to reach this stage of acceptance. And I'm telling you, people in the stage of acceptance live long. Uh, they live long. I know people, HIV now, there are people who are looking younger and stronger for years, and they are 20 years plus, because they reach the level of acceptance long ago, and their families are there with them. So in any situation, whether you burnt your house, you've been demoted or whatever, uh, you're less likely to get into complicated symptoms if you accept. And you know those symptoms, they lower your immune system, and even you can get heart attack, yeah? So uh, you can get, I think I went through this before last time, you can get any condition when you're so stressed because you are not accepting. So the earlier you, you accept, the better. So I think I went through some of these emotional symptoms before and I know Wanjiru has done a very good job in the presentation. Um, behavioral issues. Sometimes you find somebody going through these reactions projects his anger on somebody else so that somebody is angry with you, is bitter, is it's and you you react you start reacting you shouldn't react you need to understand it is a normal reaction you need to be supported you need counseling and it's a phase they'll come out of it so when you see somebody's behavior react that they drinking aggressiveness then you know that's part of the the change and then of course we have abnormal grief reaction which is extreme sometimes we have to now admit you and and manage you or it could be that every year on a certain month where your husband died, that month you just break down as if he has died again. You know, he keeps dying again. So you go through that morning. So they need a lot of help and they can come out. They have seen, have seen that. So basically, I think the rest, uh, Wanjiru has done a good job. And um, it's natural, it's healthy. When you grieve, please, you're not mad. <laughs> you, you just need support, you need, Help allow yourself. Sometimes we tell patients, go back to the burial site, go with the photos, go back. If you didn't mourn enough, go with your family, your loved ones mourn, yeah? And then go through the photos, remember the good days. So, you know, some of these processes help you actually come to peace, yeah? And, and, and able now to move on, yeah, so basically, Otherwise, in severe cases, we are there. We are able to give you some med med medication to relax uh, in case you're not able to relax. Otherwise, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Makanyego. Um, uh, you can stop sharing your screen now. So um, if you have any questions and you would want them um, answered, uh, kindly put that on the Q&A section and we'll be able to answer that. Um, we have experts uh, in mental health uh, who will be able to um, uh, uh, talk to you about this. So you realize that uh, for any mental health uh, issue, you have to, like for grief, you have to have that closure. That closure is really important. At the end of uh, uh, Dr. Makanyego's uh, presentation, she said that you need to go back, look at the photos, uh, look at um, uh, the memories, and uh, uh, remember the memories and laugh and uh, smile about it. Because remember, we only live once. And um, the moment you are happy, you increase your days on this earth. That's all. Uh, ensure that you uh, uh, try as much as possible to uh, go through the grief and loss properly. If you need assistance, uh, uh, you can uh, come to our platforms and uh, be able to consult with a mental health special, uh, specialist who will be able to assist you to go through this uh, um, uh, gracefully. And uh, at the end of it all, at least you uh, have um, that element of um, uh, um, <laughs> um, how do we call it? Uh, closure. The closure is what you need. You have to accept this person is gone. I will not see them ever again. 
but the moments that we shared on this app, they're good. So you have to go through a series of uh, 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 um, uh, uh, processes that, so that you can reach to that point where now you are comfortable with the laws. And especially with this pandemic, you know, like uh, currently I've, um, I've actually seen people who've uh, gone through uh, laws and um, they've not had the chance to bury their um, uh, uh, loved ones. So that closure, that element of uh, uh, um, uh, going through that process, the, most of them are still in denial because they've not believed that, oh, okay, my whoever is uh, normal. So with the pandemic comes in a lot of things. One of them being grief, yeah? How would you go through the grief loss of a, a, or a, because of a bereavement? How do you go through it? Now, wh what should you do? If, for instance, you lost uh, somebody and um, um, uh, it's somebody that uh, is uh, really close to you, but it was during the lockdown, you were not able to travel and that person was buried within uh, um, a week or less, what happens? How are you feeling? What exactly do you want to do? Who have you consulted? Have you talked to anyone about it? Is it just within you? So there is a lot that is involved. And you realize that the moment you have not come, um, you've not had any closure, you tend to have other problems. You might be having a lot of fatigue at the end of the day. You might be saying, I'm having a sore throat. You might be saying, I'm having uh, um, um, th th I've seen people come in and say, I know I have malaria, I know I have this condition, I have, know I have this and that, I have hyperacidity, I'm having ulcers, all that. But you dig deep and you get that it is a mental problem that is challenging, is making them behave the way they are. And at the end of the day, we treat, yes, the medical condition and we refer you to the mental health practitioners who are able to at least now figure out the best way to manage you. Because remember, we are, uh, in the medical practice, there's no monopoly of, uh, of uh, information. We have to work with the other stakeholders. And these stakeholders will be able to help us be able to give you the best uh, treatment uh, ever. So um, thank you very much, everyone. And um, there are a few questions that are here. Uh, are there notes available on what one missed on the earlier webinar and how they can get them? Yes, our webinars are uh, actually um, on YouTube and you can easily uh, watch them. Uh, we've not deleted them on YouTube. We cast on YouTube and if you follow us on YouTube you, or any of our uh, social media channels, you'll be able to see all the webinars that we've had on, uh, especially on mental health. This is the third um, mental health uh, webinar, uh, uh, a part of, um, I think, eight series. So we have, uh, is it, uh, we have three more, so, so uh, six, not eight. Uh, we have three more topics that we will speak about in the next coming weeks. So you can always register and um, you'll get a notification before the webinar. So anyone with any question, you want to lift up your hand and uh, we can be able to answer uh, before we can give uh, the parting shots from uh, all of us. Anyone? Oh. Um, Robbie Micha, you asked, is uh, the morning period limited? And I would like Dr. Macanego to answer this. Uh, are you still on, Dr. Margaret? Just repeat the question, please. Um, somebody has asked, is the morning period li limited? It, it, it varies. <laughs> I, I think it varies. I think uh, I had it varies for some people maybe longer shorter it depends on your 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 nature your personality your relationship with the person yeah uh, your culture your tradition and other factors so it's very variable 
Mm. So you realize, um, I'm, I'm also um, just want to add on uh, so that uh, uh, Robbie is uh, able to understand. So this varies for each and every person. The relationship, yes, the uh, uh, closeness. It can be your father, but uh, you've never known your father. You've known your father while you're, not, uh, you're an adult. You will go through that grief a shorter period. You might, it might be a friend that you've uh, been living with or a roommate, but these roommates, you've been really close. You've been doing everything together. That loss is different from that person that you're not really attached. So it will vary. And uh, um, uh, I'm meant to understand that with the, uh, the morning, it depends with each and every individual. There are people who will, each individual mourns differently. There are those who will wail. There are those who will just keep, uh, uh, um, just isolate themselves and think about it. The mourning is different to each and every individual. We cannot be able to say uh, everybody mourns by crying. Uh, you know, like um, in, in Kenya alone, uh, uh, people in the Western Kenya will uh, will uh, uh, shout and uh, moan and uh, eat and uh, dance. Uh, some other people will just sit there, will cry uh, on that day, and they will keep quiet about it. Uh, it depends where you also come from. It depends on how you're raised also, because it depends on so many factors. Your personality itself is one of the factors. Okay. Okay. Um, We've answered that. Any other questions? Um, I don't know if we have any question on the uh, on YouTube. Um, one of our staff should be getting back to me on the same. Otherwise, if you have a question, you can raise your hand. We are almost coming to the end of this webinar. Um, there is a poll that was ongoing. Uh, if you are not able to answer, kindly answer those questions. Um, we need to at least uh, get to know um, if uh, you have, uh, um, this is just for our information and so that we are able to help you better. For those people who say they've had a problem with the Sasa Doctor application, kindly uh, write to us at info at sasadoctor.com and we'll be able to assist you. Uh, we will also share a mobile number so that uh, you can uh, talk to our uh, customer service team and they'll be able to assist you. Mm, just a second. Um, meanwhile, Wanjiru, you can say something. Uh, I'm not seeing anybody uh, with their hand up. Uh, yes, I can give my closing uh, remarks. Yeah. So remember, uh, at, I just want to say at one point or the other, everybody has to go through loss and uh, the, ho the whole process will apply. So it depends with how where you are. So it's good to notice when you've, you have a prolonged period of griefing and when you, you need to realize when you need uh, attention, when you need help, because some of us are not able to go through it alone. Uh, most of the time you might find most uh, people around you are not so helpful. You don't feel like you're supported. You don't feel like you have enough uh, support or you have enough people listening to you. So you need to check on all those in case you're withdrawing in case you're not interested with your job anymore you're not happy anymore you're feeling like you're empty you're feeling like you're hopeless life is not uh, doesn't matter anymore that those are red flag to show you you need assistance from a, a medical uh, or, or counseling you need counseling or psychiatry uh, help so it's always good to check for most of the people in Kenya, I've, re, uh, I've lived in Kenya mostly, so most of the people in Kenya, they are able to go through the bereavement process without any assistance, but it's, it's natural. If you need help, kindly be willing to accept to be helped. So otherwise, thank you so much for listening in and hope this, you, you find this helpful. Thank you very much, uh, Wanjiru. Um, some, uh, 
have, have uh, gotten another question. Do you have mentor sessions on Sasa Doctor and can one see a therapist? Yes, on Sasa Doctor, we have um, uh, uh, just uh, the therapists, that's uh, the psychologists, uh, counseling psychologists, and we also have uh, psychiatrists. So uh, just download the Sasa Doctor application and uh, you can uh, schedule an appointment with any of them and you'll be able to get assistance. Our, uh, uh, We've not limited the time that you can talk to the mental health specialists, but uh, we have uh, tried to uh, um, ensure that uh, you stay within 45 minutes to an hour so that you at least get the best out of it. If you need to open uh, or, or, or have further follow-ups, if you need, um, um, uh, what do we call, if you need, to be assisted uh, or physically or to assess a physical assessment, you'll be advised where which uh, facility to come to. You can come to our facility, you can go to our assessment or health specialty hospital. It depends where you are in. Um, yes. Then there is another question. At times, depression creeps in after a period of time because one refused to move on from the denial stage. How do you go about it? Dr. Margaret Macanego, can you answer this as we finalize? Yes, um, thank you. Um, yeah, the depression, especially in a case where uh, somebody was not prepared for this incident and it, it, it came in unexpected um, and they did not get adequate support. You know, where you have family support, counseling and all that, usually they come back, they bounce back. But a few cases, persist to depression. Um, in mild depression, we are able to handle uh, through online or even they can visit our facility where we do supportive therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy. And that usually, uh, a few sessions, they usually bounce back, they recover. But in case it is moderate or severe, again, we are able to handle so that we minimize the risks of suicide among other conditions. We are available for them. Okay, thank you. You've heard from uh, Dr. Makenego is uh, that uh, you um, uh, this is something that uh, can be easily be dealt with. So uh, just ensure that uh, you can um, uh, get uh, uh, Daktari on the platform and so that there is, she's able to advise. Um, there's a team of uh, practitioners that we work with and uh, they'll be able to attend to you. Um, you can easily move from the denial, move uh, uh, um, from um, this uh, depression issues uh, easily if you seek help. It's not easy. Uh, we just have to normalize uh, seeking help. It, most people, most of us do not uh, uh, think it's easy to, for us to seek any help, but um, all we need to do is take that first step. That first step is really important. The moment you take that step, it's now easy for you to be able to um, get to uh, 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 understand what you're going through so that you don't go into um, a worse situation. Thank you very much. Um, at the end of the webinar, there'll be some other uh, information, um, infographics uh, that uh, will help you uh, sort of um, know how to use our application. For those ones who have uh, uh, downloaded the application and um, are not able to um, do one thing or the other, uh, kindly uh, send us uh, or uh, uh, you can uh, call us on uh, 0700, 0700, 0700, 11, two to six. And we will share that on the chat as the videos are playing. So you can uh, uh, take that number and uh, uh, contact us and we'll be able to assist you. Thank you very much. And uh... Sasa Doctor Virtual Healthcare app is your place for consultations with a wide range of practitioners and specialists. You can upload your prescriptions and get your medicine delivered for free anywhere in Kenya. We offer affordable and timely healthcare.
In these challenging times, accessing a doctor is as easy as breathing. Consult with your doctor on your mobile phone using the Sasa Doctor app and get your medication delivered to you. Sasa Doctor, your doctor is just a call away. Stay home, stay safe, stay healthy with Sasa Doctor. Here is a detailed introduction to navigate through the Sasa Doctor application. Step 1, here is how to download the application. On your phone menu, click and open the Play Store application. On the search bar, type in, Sasa Doctor as one word, click on the application and proceed to installation. Once the application is installed, click on open this should be the first screen that appears. Step 2, Registration. Here is how to register on the Sasa Doctor application. Click on the Create Account button to initiate a first time registration. You have two options, to either register as a doctor or a patient. Click, on the Patient button. Allow all prompts and permissions to ensure the application has the required access to run on your phone. Enter all information, including, first and last name, username, which we prefer you use your mobile number, as this can only be registered to a specific person, enter and confirm password and hit on the next button. On this page, enter, mobile number starting with 7007, date of birth, gender, town or city, national ID, passport or military ID. Upload the front side, back side of your identification document and a selfie while holding your identification card and or insurance card. Click on the next button to proceed. On this page, you have an option to add, your email address, physical address, employer, insurer and referral code, kindly note, this page is not optional to anyone using insurance as their mode of payment. On the final registration page. Add a clear selfie as your profile picture at the time of registration, to ensure ease of verification when seeing a doctor. Remember to cite if you have any existing medical conditions. Click on the submit button. You have now been successfully registered. Step 3. How to add your family on the application. Click on the add family icon. Add all required information, this includes, a clear profile picture preferably one taken at the time of registration to ease the verification process when seeing a doctor, first and last name, national identification number, note, leave blank while adding those under the age of 18 years, add relationship, gender, date of birth, town or city, and finally, remember to cite if they have any existing medical conditions. Once all information is added, click on the submit button. Note, after adding a member, you can click on the pen tool to make any amendments. Children under the age of 10, are allowed to change their profile pictures every year during their birthday. Step 4. Modes of payment and how to see a doctor. Select patient to see doctor. Click on the see doctor now button. You can either choose a doctor of chose using listing from A to Z, fee from low to high or specialty. Once on the setup payment page, there are several ways to make payment on the Sasa Doctor application, which include M-Pesa, mobile money, credit card, insurance, Sasa wallet, and or by using a coupon code. If you have been issued with a coupon code to use, enter and click apply. Remember not to click on the other listed options when using a coupon code. Simply enter the code and click on apply, then hit the next button to proceed to see a doctor. Read and accept all prompts. Take a clear selfie of yourself for verification prior to seeing a doctor. Read and accept the terms and conditions of the member's declaration consent. The connection to the doctor begins, in a few seconds, the virtual consultation on the SASA doctor application starts. On the consultation screen, there are four buttons to take note of, from left to right, there is a microphone icon, this is the mute and unmute button, there is a flashlight icon, this is the flashlight on and off button, to enhance the video when in a dark place, there is a camera icon, this is to switch in between the main and selfie camera, 
a red call icon, this is to end the virtual consultation with the doctor, there is a chat icon, this is to chat directly with the doctor, this ensures, the deaf and dumb can also make consultations with our doctors freely. After your SASA doctor visit, you will always receive a prompt to quit the video conferencing. Step 5. How to restart an appointment. In case you ran out of browsing data, phone charge etc. in the middle of a consultation, do not worry, you can restart your appointment as follows. Click on the hamburger menu or three bars icon on the top left corner of your application pages, click on the appointments tab. Any scheduled and or dropped visits, will appear on the upcoming side, all completed visits will appear on the history side. How to add insurance. On the home page, click on the account to add insurance for. Still on the home page, click on the three bar icon, or the hamburger menu, and click on the insurance tab. Click on the add or inscribe plus icon, on the bottom right of your screen. On the add insurance page, confirm the account that you are adding insurance, select your insurer and add member number then click on the submit button. After submitting, the addition will be verified or declined depending on the date you entered. This is where to check if your addition has been verified or declined. On this page, all information of the insured account is shown. Sassy Doctor, Kenya's leading virtual healthcare provider. There has been difficulty embracing new technology in the past, it has never been easier now than on the Sassy Doctor application. It's really exceptional to be able to see your doctor and not have to leave your house especially with the COVID-19 pandemic. If you are concerned about possible coronavirus, COVID-19, symptoms or exposure, contact a doctor on the Sassy Doctor. Sassy Doctor Virtual Healthcare app is your place for consultations with a wide range of practitioners and specialists. You can upload your prescriptions and get your medicine delivered for free anywhere in Kenya. We offer affordable and timely healthcare. Thank you, everyone. Um, as you can see from my screen right now, um, this is the World Suicide Prevention uh, Week. Uh, so every day from one, from uh, every day from one on all our social media channels between uh, uh, yesterday to the fifteenth, uh, for some interactive and informative uh, content on suicide prevention. So you'll be seeing. Uh, a lot of uh, things on uh, mental health on the platform, on uh, all our social media sites. Kindly just uh, engage uh, on uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook, everywhere, so that to be able to talk about this. Our hashtag for this uh, uh, period is um, hashtag what's bothering you and hashtag uh, take a minute. Thank you very much for attending the webinar and uh, hope to see you in our next one. So watch out for the posters for the next one. Uh, thank you very much. Sasa Doctor Virtual Healthcare app is your place for consultations with a wide range of practitioners and specialists. You can upload your prescriptions and get your medicine delivered for free anywhere in Kenya. We offer affordable and timely healthcare. In these challenging times, accessing a doctor is as easy as breathing. Consult with your doctor on your mobile phone using the Sasa Doctor app and get your medication delivered to you. Sasa Doctor, your doctor is just a call away. Sasa Doctor, 
Kenya's leading virtual healthcare provider. There has been difficulty embracing new technology in the past, it has never been easier now than on the SASA doctor application. It's really exceptional to be able to see your doctor and not have to leave your house especially with the COVID-19 pandemic. If you are concerned about possible coronavirus, COVID-19, symptoms or exposure, contact a doctor on the SASA doctor application now. Stay home. Stay safe. SASA Doctor Virtual Healthcare app is your place for consultations with a wide range of practitioners and specialists. You can upload your prescriptions and get your medicine delivered for free anywhere in Kenya. We offer affordable and timely healthcare. Bye bye, see you next time.